facilities workshop to order. I know Tim is here, sure, but he is, uh, I think he may be on a phone call or something right now, so he'll join us momentarily, but I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Dr. Good Ray. afternoon, Chairman Booth and members of the board. Before I turn it over to Mr. Clinch and the rest of the team, I did want to talk just a little bit about our project status as we've moved forward for these last couple of different projects. I know that we have had some, some discussion and some frustration and, you know, all around about our budgets and those types of things and how these things have changed. But as I started to reflect on kind of where we were with that, and I think of the Harmony Middle School project, which we moved up an entire year pretty quickly, the Michigan Avenue project, which we were really planning before we even knew we were going to have a sales tax referendum, and then now Neo City, which a year ago wasn't even a bleep on the radar, things have really taken hold very, very rapidly. And as a result, we haven't had the solid information that we need in the beginning to give you as a board really solid budgets. And so for that, I take full responsibility and apologize to the rest of the team. With the Neo City Academy project in particular, um, Little and Gilbane and, and Mr. Clinch and Mr. Meachin and the rest of the team have worked very, very hard to really dream big. I think that was the challenge that you gave us when we started out thinking about this kind of a project. Sometimes though, dreaming big also does still require some boundaries. So I'm also helping to meet with them and, and help remind that we also have to keep this within what would be a reasonable scope because we are statutorily required to maintain those maximum cost per student station for this school and for every project that we build. So while we are going to be asking for some adjustment to the budget for Neo City Academy today, I want you to know that as a team we've worked very, very hard to be fiscally responsible with these dollars but also do something that we think is going to be really, really exciting and neat. I shared with you this afternoon some work that Mr. Meachin has already been doing with his instructional staff that he's bringing on board about what the project-based learning will look like in this very rich, rigorous environment. And this is the team to tell you what that space is going to look like to make those things happen. So, Mr. Clinch? Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Pace. So, the first project that we'll be updating on is the Neo City Academy. And uh, it is true that uh, this is a very aggressive schedule. We have been moving this forward uh, very quickly. And uh, we are now at a decision point with our budget, which um, I will uh, now turn it over to the team to walk through the previous concept that you've seen. Uh, it hasn't changed, been scaled back a little bit to meet our project parameters. Uh, but with that, I'm going to turn it over to Philip Donovan with Little Architects to walk us through. Oops, sorry. Good afternoon. Um, so the new academy, new academy update. Uh, we'll pull this slide up every time to remind us of what the project goals and objectives are. It's a 500 student station, 45,000 square foot um, curriculum, um, choice school based around engineering, biomedical, and cybersecurity. It's highly immersive. We've maintained that throughout the uh, meetings and the project progression. High performance building um, that's targeted to reduce energy costs, reduce maintenance time and costs, and create healthier, happier learning spaces. So our target budget is $10 million. Um, with, we have, as was uh, stated, we have a very focused design and construction schedule. Um, project goals, these are the design drivers that the stakeholders um, came up with at the very first meeting. So these things were all employed, have been all employed as we programmed and we've developed and gotten to the point where we are at. Um, flexible, adaptable, efficient, and effective. How does it really maintain the high level of curriculum um, that is required for the school? Um, the schedule, again, we look at it, we are in the purple, so we're very quickly coming to the design development um, conclusion and moving into construction documents, which will then be due at the beginning of July. Um, we'd have the first day of the school, uh, the first class, in August of this year, and then the school, um, they'll move over to the new facility in 2019. So this was a space program development. We've presented this before. We started out with the concept that this is a 45,000 square foot school for 500 kids. We knew the teacher-student teacher ratio, how many kids per grade in the curriculum. And together with the core stakeholders, we've had we had seven meetings over five weeks very, very quickly to develop this program that was based around immersive learning and those spaces that include impart, think, create, and connect, and it's ways of scales of space that students meet and learn in. Um, so the timeline of events it was developed on how we got here. We met with you on the schematic design presentation was the last presentation you saw with the renderings. Since then, um, we received a 
reconciled cost estimate that was approximately 13 million eight point eight thirteen point eight million. Um, we then quickly spent a week looking at cost reduction options and uh, reduced the cost down to thirteen million. Um, it reduced um, items, but did not reduce space programs. So reduced things like finishes, how we're um, uh, trim out and fit out the building. Um, and we presented three other costs uh, to reduce the scope. We looked at other ways of reducing the scope, which was complete redesigns um, to get down to that 10 million. Uh, we met with project our school district leadership on 326, um, and we presented the current cost estimates the next day. So um, we're now at the presentation school board for your people. So these are really the key elements here, the design and cost considerations. Um, after meeting with all the core stakeholders and the leadership, we strongly believe all the core stakeholders strongly believe that all current programs should be maintained, um, that the curriculum is being built around this program, um, and that it's it's key to maintaining the, um, the the school and its design. We've utilized, you know, within this budget, we've utilized typical school construction. We're just um, employing it in, with some varied methods to achieve the high performance. So a lot of that is reducing the energy use. So it's tilt wall. It's, we're not coming at it with um, anything different than what we're using on other school uh, buildings right now. Um, it's anticipated to save between seventy-five dollars to $95,000 annually on utility and maintenance costs. So it's going to reduce the operating and maintenance costs um, as the years go on. And uh, the current budget allots 22.9% of construction costs towards immersive learning. So that's everything beyond site and the shell. It's everything, windows, all the the finishes inside, um, that all falls under that 22.9%. And so within that $13 million, we, we're doing a lot um, with, with a, a smaller percentage. And the cost per student station still remains below the state required maximums. At the $13 million, we're still below that? Yes. yes. Okay. I got a question. Yeah. Dr. Pace and I talked about this Who? yesterday. I'm just curious, what oh. do you anticipate? Kind of like OXA, taking this from nine through twelve to a, to six through twelve. Not until after we get nine through twelve built and doing running well. So give us four years from two thousand eighteen. So we're not going to need the student station before then. I don't believe we will now. Yeah, we actually, when we open the new school, we'll open to two grade levels. We open the first year at the Gateway High School to the freshmen, the following year to the freshmen and the sophomore, one grade level at a time. So. I would think, and let Mr. Beecham chime in, that we would fill out all grade levels, freshman through senior. Will you have for students, and this is a little bit off subject, but it should be relatively easy question, will you have some sophomores that come in as sophomores, or do you, do you really want to keep, you, you need to start there at night? Potentially we could, depending on space and, and, and interest. We may have some the people that decide is, they don't want to do the deal at Gateway for a year, but they would really like to get any kind of situation. Right. The problem is the cohort method that they'll be scheduling okay. will be a little bit kind of difficult gotcha. for somebody just to plug in. So you really need to get in this thing at ninth grade. Yes. Right. And unlike OXA, we're building in the infrastructure for that second future building. So it, it's it's planned, it's included in our, our space programming. Mm -hmm. Site planning. planning and the, site planning. the unique uh, way we're approaching the, the learning spaces, unlike your typical school, even when it opens with two grade levels, virtually all of the teaching spaces will be used when it opens. It's very different from our standard delivery methods. It's, we're not going to have dedicated that that? classrooms that are only going to be for for uh, for juniors and classrooms that will only be for seniors, they'll, they'll, they're going to be using all the space. Much more open, fluid learning spaces as opposed to a four classroom, four walls. And, and sometimes they might have a class in a lab that's on the third floor, and the next day they might be in a different type of learning space, So because we have the scale, different scales of space throughout the building, and so they're not organized by levels. Um, what are some examples, um, and just so everyone knows, I'm I just be candid. I'm not happy about this at all. Um, I'm frustrated that we're talking about a 30 some odd percent increase over our current budget. Um, I'm frustrated that the school board makes a decision to go forward with a program like this and a, a, a campus like this. Um, 
and then in some way are being told, well, if you want what you said you really wanted, you just got to open the checkbook a little bit further. Um, I guess my question in all of that would be, what are we talking about? When we say, what if the school board said no, 10 million is the number, that's all you get? Then we have to cut in the program. For the programs that were built into this facility, the cybersecurity, biomedical, advanced engineering, we would have to look at pulling back some of those components. And I, and I understand that. So my question would be, what does that pulling back look like? Because I don't know that as we sit here tonight, and maybe I'm the only one, but as we sit here tonight, we actually understand that for 10 million, you get this exactly, or for 13 million eight, you get this exactly. And how do I make a decision about whether or not I would agree to something like this without knowing what I'm getting or what I'm losing? I think if you look at slide 13, Mr. Weisire. You get the rectangle with the basic, the very basic building. And you this, get your traditional high school wing. I got a ten million dollars sounded low to me to start. It, and it, it, and, it, I, and as I said at the very beginning, same here. That we was. said it was a high. And I actually how, expected the conversation to come up. But I appreciate how aggressive we were. I thought it was going to be fifteen million. Yeah, I thought it was going to be more. And Tim, I, you're, uh, as a steward of tax dollars, I get it. You're right. We're told one thing, and I don't. I don't consider it a bait and switch as much as they were. I think people were very aggressive trying to meet something very aggressively, and there's nothing wrong with that, but after they took a pen and paper to it, they realized that maybe it was a little unrealistic. You know, when I toured, when, you know, we, we saw the construction of, of the sensor manufacturing facility, right? And we got to tour it, and, you know, I mean, I, at least my experience was pretty interesting because we started talking a lot about the technical aspects, um, how much it cost, um, and, um, and, just, and just how the training Facilities for people who 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 who, um, who are involved in these careers and in this industry, it's not it's not cheap. It's expensive. These programs are probably some of the most expensive programs to have anywhere. As a matter of fact, a lot of private, you know, colleges and institutions <coughs> don't even have them. So yeah, the ten thousand, the ten million always sounded like you know what, that's um, wishful thinking. Um, I'm not at all surprised that you know we're going in here. But what I am is I'm very, very, I'm very committed to the vision that we had mm -hmm. and with these programs. And just so you guys know, so, I, I don't disagree with any of your comments, to be honest with you, that I was shocked with a $10 million number initially as well, and I thought, mm -hmm. wow, we can get this for $10 million. That been, <laughs> and that was, to be honest with you, that would have been part lovely. of my vote to say, I'm all in for $10 million? Absolutely, let's build this thing. It's going to be amazing. Um, <clears throat> So am I am I surprised that it's costing more? No, I'm probably not surprised because I was pleasantly surprised by the idea of a ten million dollar budget in the first place. But I don't I, I think and, and Deborah and I spoke briefly about this this morning in passing. This is not the way that we want to do business and this is not we don't want to get to a situation. So think about this. Imagine that we sit here now and the board says, and the board's been running around, the superintendents are running around telling everybody, this is what we're building. How awesome is it going to be? This is great. And our, our partners are all excited. And then the budget comes through and we go, mm, no, wow, we didn't realize that. And then we have to go out and eat crow and tell everybody, well, we really built all of this on a false premise that we're going to build it for a certain amount of money. My point is maybe even less about Neo City Academy and more just about a way that we need to make sure we're doing business. That the board can't make a decision based upon the idea of $10 million only then for three, four, six, eight months later to go, oh, well, by the way, it's actually going to be 13 or 14 or 18 or whatever. Um, you know, we're, we're all... Uh, dependent upon the quality of the information that we're given at any given time, and the superintendent's in the same boat, and she's dependent upon your department. Your dependents, to, your departments depend upon our vendors, and and the whole system has to work right so that everybody is feeding high quality, accurate information to one another, so that ultimately at the end we can make these decisions and feel confident that when we make them that they're the right decision that we're not going to have to go back later. And again, for me, this isn't a Neo City thing. This is just a big picture thing that. Um, I, I have heartburn as as it sits. I'm, I'm, I've been struggling with it for the past day or two, three, um, and really trying to decide. You know, do I just say based on principle alone? 
uh, I get it, the, the board's probably going to agree to go forward with this, but I struggle with it, I'm not going to do it, or do I go, you know what, it, it matches the vision that the board laid out, and you guys are bringing to us exactly what it's going to cost to create exactly what we said we want, and I just need to realize that's the reality of it and move on. So for me, the decision is about how we go forward and making sure we don't repeat these type of things. Um, and I don't expect precision. None of us are always going to get it to the penny. I, I totally understand that. Um, but, you know, it's imagine any other campus, any other scenario, and well, now we're over on this, or the ground costs more for this, or the engineering's this, and all of these this and that's, they add up. And, you know, I don't want to look back uh, with my peers, you know, eight years from now and go, man, well, this one, this one, this one, this one added up to $22 million over the course of 10 years that we approved, but the original budgets were significantly less. So I would say, Mr. Washard, that I, sh I share your same frustration, you know, and, I, and I've shared this with Dr. Face. We actually had a pretty, a pretty extensive conversation about this. And, and my point is exactly where you kind of finished was that, I'll go back to the beginning. I did. I always thought this number was low, and we'd probably be having this conversation as Mr. Soto stated. My problem is now for the second kind of new build that we have looked at the 30 percent increase and said, "Well, but what we're saying is our numbers are wrong." You know, I want to. You know, our numbers are wrong, and we need to be. We need to be. Our team needs to be coming up with the right numbers so that, again, not expecting precision that we can come here and say this is what we're getting for this and this is the commitment that we're making. So when it comes to the point, well, we're at 13, but hey, for an extra 500,000 we get this, or hey, if we cut this, you can get down to 12.5. That's where we need to be. Not, hey, this is going to be 10, gung-ho, now it's 13. You know, uh, it's so interesting, though, that in every, we've only had variances. Um, we've always had variances, but we've never had a variance this high. By way of percentage. By way of percentage. Uh, Harmony. No, Harmony was, was, was that. It was, yeah, it was oh, that. but that had to do with a gym. No, right? no, no. no there was, was not supposed to be was, student station. So there was a mistake there. There was something that we no, didn't number, understand about the what number was, was This number we started with was it was a flawed number that didn't reflect the current current uh, building uh, cost. And I think we're, we're, we're here, there, too. And, and I don't want to put that all on Mr. Clinch's team. I think that it's just we're, we're pushing some things really, really fast here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of what's happened here. I, I mean, I'm going to support this to go back to, to kind of the way you explained why you would or wouldn't support it. I would support it for the, that same reason. Um, but let's get that number right going forward. So we come up here. You know, so we're working at a maximum, maybe ten percent somewhere, right. up or down. Yeah. Not as, I, as I shared with the board at the very beginning I'm today, I and I've shared with you individually. I take full responsibility for the fact that we've moved these projects fast. We didn't take into account the cost of construction escalation that are out there, both in terms of materials and labor, and we were naive in terms of thinking we could get what we wanted for that particular price. And Mark told me we couldn't, and he has to push harder the next time to say, we can't, okay? But yep. here we are today, yep. and we're going to make sure that as we move forward, we take more time in the beginning, and maybe not try to rush some of these things quite as rapidly as we had hoped, or as aggressively, in order to make sure that we're bringing you the right number. And I'll take full responsibility for where we are today. We yeah. can get to a $10 million number, but not with the vision and the dreams that this board has created for us. And so that's what we're trying to fulfill at the same time and what we think is still fiscally responsible to help us move forward with something different. Mr. Uh, Mr. Thacker. My has. only question is, uh, yes, I agree with their comments as well, but is the third, how close is the 13 million? Are, are we within 5% of that number or is that it? Well, we're still early in the DDs. Actually, the 13 million was based on our SD estimate. So now that we go forward, you know, we have to be very cognizant to hold to that $13 million uh, construction cost. And, and I'll say this too, that this is a very different type sure. of project. It's not a prototype. It's not like anything that we've ever done before. And we didn't want this project to look like anything we've done before. We clearly wanted something different. And as part of that, the vision for this project has evolved you know, and it's great that we have our core stakeholders, especially Mr. Meacham on board, to help communicate what that vision needs to be for this project. So we believe that we can hit that vision based on the space programming exercise that we've worked through 
for that 13 million. In fact, we will be monitoring Little and Gilbane very closely to ensure that we hit 13 or less. Eric, you were uh, comment? Well, yeah, well, 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 yeah, before you do, because actually my comment was then going to be to everybody else in the room <laughs> that works as a partner with us. Um, and, and I mean this with all due respect and value for you guys as professionals and for the work that you do and for the partnership that we have in providing quality workspaces throughout Osceola County. But you guys have to make sure that you're, everybody in the room that works on our projects, you have to make sure you're giving us hard and tight numbers. And don't be scared to tell us, hey, you guys said you want it for 10. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Um, and I think you guys are in, you guys are in a precarious <laughs> place sometimes because you, you may be scared or intimidated to say that and go, well, you know, how do we do this? You know, we talk to them, they talk to her, she talks to us, and then we all sit around the table and these guys freak out and we go, oh, crap, we wanted to say it all along. But I'm just telling you as a board member, and these guys can disagree with me if they want to, uh, you're here because we value you as experts. I'm looking at you. I should be looking at everybody. <laughs> You've got to give us the real information up front. And if we're going into a project where we're about to spend $10 million or $40 million or $72 million, and you guys know that everything you hear us saying is crazy and is never going to come to life based on the numbers that are being projected, you have to come to us as partners and say, hey, guys, I don't think this is real. <clears throat> Otherwise, we find ourselves in a situation like this to where... Um, you know, in the big picture, $3 million is a small number in the scope of what it is that we're doing and we're building and we have to spend. But $3 million by way of percentage is a large increase on a small project like this. And $3 million for the taxpayers represents a large investment, whether we see it or we understand it or we don't. And so my point is not, I don't think, you know, Deb, that's what I like about you is that you, you always step up and you lead the way you're supposed to leave and you own what you're supposed to own. But the, the fault doesn't sit with any one of us in the room. It sits with all of us in this room, including the five of us. But if we all aren't having these conversations early on and being willing to be bold up front to say, guys, I don't think this is real, um, then we're going to sit here and we're going to have these moments where we get frustrated and go, well, how the heck did we get here? And that goes back to you know land and buying land and what we're developing and what the underlying elements of the land are. I mean, all of those pieces are vitally important. And, you know, what we dealt with on the Harmony site, you know, looking back four years after the swap or three years after the swap, you know, those are things we need to make sure we're figuring out early on with all of our stakeholders, and that's all of us as partners in this. We need, particularly you guys, it's okay with us if you disagree with these guys. I mean, you're, if you're not going to, if you disagree, you're not going to say anything, quite frankly. They're, really they're painfully honest. Uh, well, they well, need to be honest with us, too, yeah, not yeah. just with you guys. I, I'm going to tell you, I don't want, I don't want to be painfully honest here today. I want you to be painfully honest a week before this workshop happens because this isn't the time to do this. The time is a week ago. To, the time is immediately when you find out that it's going to be $13 again, million and not we're, What we're all about is we're trying to get the best value for the district. I, yeah, and I if the goal is to never bust a budget, well, you just start with a really big budget and you never have a problem. But the problem is if we'd started with a $13 million construction budget, We'd probably be sitting at 15 right now, because we're in a we're in a, a period of time when everything's escalating. Uh, it's it's crazy watching the cost per, per square sure. foot just creep up and creep up. That's why DOE has to publish a, mm -hmm. a month by month with that limit. It's because sure. it changes month by month. It's so we we have to force some some restrictions on the system. So we have to be you know fiscally conservative to say we are going to do everything we can to keep this budget down. We made a lot of tough decisions already the going through from, from the very gleam, you know, glimmer of this idea, getting through you know, SDs and schematic design and going now into production. We've made a lot of tough choices because that was going to be too expensive. We, we knew we could get where we needed to be by choosing this other method that's, that's more more efficient. And I think each one of us and we're doing that as, in, in as our we go own, through the in our jobs process. understands also that we have to make decisions on how we invest. So you might come to us and say, look, for this amount, you could get this. And we could say, you know what, that would be an added benefit for our community, for all the stakeholders, for the students, for the learning environment. And we may say, you know what, go for that. Um, but at this point, when you come and say 10 to 13, 
Now it's just hardball on the back end to get to 13. Instead of saying, if we started at 13, to say, hey, you know what, for 13.5 we get this, and we go, you know what, that's a great investment. Well, but now the whole tone of all these conversations has changed to now we're going to hardball down to 13 somehow. Um, so I don't want to see that happen. Let me just say this to you guys in particular, the two of you and your team. I, this, for me, this isn't about you guys. And what I mean by that is I'm not faulting the two of you gentlemen sitting across from me. I'm looking at all of us in this room and saying if we're going to get these things right, we all have to do it together. And, and the superintendent pointed out 15 minutes ago that we had a very compressed timeline, a very aggressive vision, and a very aggressive goal of where we wanted to be. And you guys had the very difficult job of trying to, to balance our dreams and goals and visions, uh, the mechanics of what all the ac academic side wants, and then what you guys have to work with our partners to actually bring to life. And so I think it's important you hear that from me, because if you don't, I think you can leave this going, well, that was terrible. These guys just put us on blast. That's not it at all. It's a simple function of we, we all, you guys, you guys, all of us, we all have to have good information. We all have to make the tough decisions. And I, I genuinely choose to believe that all of us want the best thing in the end, but we don't want to find ourselves in these situations. And as you guys know, our building program is only ramping up. So if yes. we don't have this type of conversation today, we're going to end up having a worse one in a year or two as we get deeper into this process. And then you're going to find a, this board or a future board being even more frustrated. So all of this is, is about saying we don't want the pendulum in either direction. Let's find that middle spot of not overinflating budgets in the beginning, not making them so tight that they're not real, um, but giving us a true picture and you guys being empowered to be able to say, hey, this will or this won't work. And I can tell you right now with the trends that we're seeing, this is what we anticipate. So I know I've repeated myself at this point, so I'll yield. I'll be, I'll be brief. Look, now that you've heard this, we still have a lot going forward left, all right? And so I, I, I'm totally okay with the conditions that you find yourself in, new project, changing costs. We have a lot of factors that we do not know, we cannot even predict in our current business environment. I totally get that. So if now you understand what these gentlemen have said and what they expect, we still have a lot going forward with this with, with what we're estimating. I'm not going to take this 13 as the end all right now. We probably need to go ahead and go back to the drawing board and see what exactly our vision, what is it that we expect and what we want for our students with this project. Because that's, it's very important. This is part of what, as a district, we've been, we started five or six years ago. And we're, we're taking it there, you know, in terms of having Osceola County being, you know, just the, the Silicon Valley of Central Florida in terms of education and technology. We're doing that. So let's go ahead and figure out within our expectation what we want and open up the communications to get down what is really going to be. I don't really even feel like this is going to be it yet. And it could be something different. But I think that what everyone here really appreciates is to have a little bit more communications about how this is going to go. You're in, if you're in an unknown, threading some uncharted waters, fine. So are we. You know, we are, but we rely on your judgment. And so keep us up to date with what is going on and how things are changing. You'll get a board that's going to be a lot more, you know, willing to go ahead and work and understand and accept these changes. And in the end, end up with the product. The most important thing, superintendent, board, everyone here is listening is, is that we have this mission, our, our strategic goals, that we want to provide for our constituents, for this county. We need to meet those. So let's find a way of working together and, you know, we're, we're going to be generous where we have to be as well because this is really a lot more important. Like, like um, Tim said, you know, the, the, we could probably handle this. It's just that the way it's coming up. Yeah, I'm almost arguing with my argue <laughs> with my law partner. <laughs> but, I agree, but I agree with that point especially that, that Tim said. It's not, it's not about being tight here at all. There's something else that we really want to go ahead and change in the dynamics of how we're approaching this and how we understand the cost that we're approving for projects. What, well, uh, oh, you got another one? Yeah, I, I want to hear what Eric has to say. Because oh, okay. I, I did ask a question. Well, I got one. Yeah, for, for, for See, I'm never going to get it. Before we yield, I got one thing I'd like to say real quick. I mean, this, this type of, of a conversation, as far as coming back after you've got a price and then the price is actually not X, X plus, this is a very 
this is this doesn't happen. This doesn't. I mean, I've been doing this for 16 years. I don't think maybe it's happened once. So it's not. To, to everybody's credit, this is not a typical scenario. It's, we are where we are with this, and we'll move forward. I think everyone's going to has learned from it. We still want a great product, a project. Uh, Mr. Meachin's going to have a good school to run. We're going to expect big things from you and the students there. And I don't think we're going to. I think there's a lesson learned from everybody, but this is not something that happens continuously. And I think the, clearly from the board, we know we don't want to go through this again, and you guys don't want to go through this again. So I think we all know that, and. Um, to Clarence's point, though, we'd like to hear from Eric if you got something to say. I want to know your comfort level on the 13 million. Do you think that's within yeah. five percent or 10 percent? And just so, what are your thoughts? So I do. I think it's within that five to 10 percent range. Okay. Clarence, one of one of the things that we did is we really we looked hard at this thing. We, we we must have diced it up into I don't know three, four, five different scenarios where we looked at two story versus three story versus two and a half story, and what do we get for 10 million dollars? Because there is a path to 10 million dollars, but you lose the whole immersive learning environment. <coughs> you get a high performance building, but it's basically a high performance box with double loaded corridors, which doesn't which doesn't work. So so we looked at that and then we said, okay, you guys saw the rendering that we had last. Uh, that was presented at the last board meeting. Well, that was the, the initial rendering for the most part. When we looked at it, it was 14, 14.8 million. Now some of that was there was just some misunderstanding on our part when we put the numbers together when we sat down with little we got the 13.8 million and then we looked at it cut some more square footage here and there but kept all the immersive learning and we got to this 13 13 one area now in that we have factored in we do have some contingencies built in there so there are some contingencies and we've actually factored in the the steel tariff and what's going to happen with that to, to as much as we can we didn't just ignore it we actually factored a little bit so I do feel I do feel good about it okay. at the 10 million. No, okay. <laughs> definitely so, not. So there is some escalation built in for yeah. what we know today. If a hurricane comes or a 9/11, you know, whatever the case may be, we've built in escalation for what we know today. I think the key to making it all happen is really for the team just to continue to work together and you know do pricing as we as we go along and not wait until the the dd estimate is done the sd estimate is done it's it's really providing pricing to to little as we as we go along know that if we do add this this is this is the impact and so if we add it here we got to take out someplace else so. and, and another issue that uh, we can't lose sight of it's part of that immersive environment the whole you know learning construct that we're, we're dealing with here has a lot to do with the, the fit out of the space. It's not just the space itself, it's the FF and E. So this, this school, as we found with the uh, Tehopitaliga, when we did those six academies, some of those academies were very high end FF and E because of the, the programs that they had. Well, all three are like that for, for this, uh, uh, this school, especially the manufacturing piece going to have some, some really expensive F, F, and E. And so we have to leave room for that, more so than in a typical you know, high school that we were building, more so than, than uh, Tokelago it was. And, and also another important ingredient is, is bid coverage. And you know we're already having very active conversations with Gilbane to have several outreach. Uh, there is nothing really complex about this building. It's pretty much the same details as any other building. So we really want to bring in, get a lot of sub subcontractors excited about this project so that bid day, we have many bids. And that ultimately is what will drive the cost for this project. So you guys know this, that in, in my world, um, a cost like this or differential like this completely destroys an entire transaction. Um, <clears throat> My point is that there is a way for us to get to these numbers tighter earlier, um, and that that involves this type of conversation. And and you guys build in the private sector all day long, and not all your work. And I'm talking to everybody in the room as government agencies. But if you, if you come to me on a medical office building or something like that that I'm developing, and it's a it's a cost differential like that, the whole deal is out the window before we even put a spade in the ground. And so we have to think and function in those same type of ways as what is it that our market really can bear and what is it that we're really willing to spend to bring something like this to market. Um, 
and it, if this wasn't a government agency um, in the private sector, a difference like this would completely 86 the entire project. And we all that live in this space know that to be an absolute fact. So that's the way we have to think about how we approach these things. Let's get back on, on track. Okay. Now that we'll continue we've made our with our presentation. I think you can work through some of that, yeah. So we were here, and, and again, I think this is, describes a little bit about what Eric was saying. You can see we've, we've built in about 10%, um, which would be $1.3 million now in contingencies and escalation. So that stuff is the stuff that starts to move back into the project, but right now it's, it's, a, it's a big chunk of, of what we're dealing with. So. 77% um, is not involved in any of the learning environments, so we're dealing with, we're, we're doing a lot with that 22%. Um, so this is the scheme that gets us to 13 million, and what was important about this um, was to show that we're not changing the space plan. We're, we're adjusting finishes, we're adjusting the way we manipulate the exterior, trying to hold that high-tech vision. This is a building that's going to be in um, Neo City that has a certain um, distinct look as well um, within that. The yellow areas are the places where breakout learning happens, where um, you know, Mr. Meachin is planning to have a, a, a space where students learn to do their own tech on their own devices, those kind of things that are not in a typical four-walled space. Um, the blue are denoting areas of double height connection, so um, it's connecting spaces vertically as well as horizontally. So we haven't lost that. Um, We've managed to shrink the building some. This is the site plan, so you can see green is the current phase. Phase two is in the gray. Um, and how we're, you know, we've, we've got a five acre site, we have to do a lot with it there as well. Um, and we now know that phase two is going to cost us uh, like $20 million with all the, uh, with all the escalation. <laughs> well, well, phase two will become a prototype. Yeah. So we'll have our prototype reuse fee and just, all those type of synergies. Let's have to get that out there. Uh, this was this was you know going back and looking at what the 10 million option as Mr. Um, Clint was saying and the the outline there it's hard to see but it's overlaid on the um, footprint of of the current option so you can see the things that begin to fold back in and you get a double loaded corridor you don't have those places uh, where learning happens across boundaries um, and in the site plan for that um, I don't know why that's not showing up. But that is Eric's side. Yeah, just to kind of let you know where we are in the pre-construction phase, we just wrapped up our SD estimate, obviously. Um, and we are working with uh, closely with the team, providing numbers along the way to make sure that we, we stay within that budget. And I think really that is the key, is making sure we provide those accurate numbers along the way. Um, so that no, nobody's making any decisions in the vacuum. And then um, as far as the, the, the schedule goes, uh, I think currently right now we're looking at putting the project out to bid in uh, mid-July. Early uh, July. Early July would be even better with, uh, with an NTP right at the beginning of September uh, for again, a turnover of uh, for a new school year. In, in several NTP. outreach sessions so that we can really encourage good coverage, good coverage. Absolutely. We actually we're, we're in the process of planning those now, so we'll yep. probably have two to three before before it actually goes out to bid, and then really trying to leverage some corporate partnerships. Uh, we do have some some good partnerships uh, within Gilbane that we can leverage, and I know Little has the same. So we'll be seeing what kind of donations we can get as well. Excellent. About $3 million donations. That would be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well thank you gentlemen. Uh, next up we have Middle School AA Project nice, Update. Thank we'll you. ask thank uh, you. Mawson Associates, Jerry Warner, and Shinkle Schultz, Patrick Roush, to join us at the table. And this will be a very quick update. Well, as you know, we now have our permits in hand. Gopher Tortoise have been relocated, and the project has started. Had a very nice groundbreaking. I'll turn it over to uh, you. Sure. Um, you have slide. Yes, I'm sorry. <coughs> So um, my portion will be really short and sweet. Uh, this is just an update to the South, Flor South Florida permit and the Army Corps permit. Both were on track and get received those in March. So they're they're done and they're moving forward. Ar Army Corps is done. Yeah. It's done. We submitted our notice of um, notice of intent as well, or notice of commencement, I should say. So that's been uploaded. The, the Corps of Engineers literally was the next day after we had South Florida. Yep. Uh, just a quick update on the budget. So um, 
we uh, had change order number one for two million that was already approved tonight we are presenting a uh, owner change order number two for 3.6 million for owner direct purchase deduct um, which gets us to 28 million right now we've got projected out with subs giving us rough order of magnitude about 6.15 million in owner direct purchases projected and about 350,000 uh, in sales tax savings I, I, I just want to stop you there you know, we went from 22 to 33, or 25 to 33, but didn't we know all along that we were gonna be direct purchasing and saving this, this money? Yes, but we can't count on those savings up front. Typically, you don't receive those until you reconcile. And I think I've heard Mr. Thacker ask this question before as well, and I, I'll ask it again. But. Typically, those ODP savings are turned over and put back into the kitty for the next projects. They're not, turned back into the existing project and applied. Now we did do that to some extent at Toho because of uh, the, those budget sure. challenges. Do you anticipate that we may be doing that by the, by the end of this project I, as well I don't with see these savings? where we'll have the no, deed. We, we, we have a well-established project. Well, there project. you go. You got your 5.6 million you could spend <laughs> on this. <laughs> you, you no, the district still spent it, though. No, I yeah, don't. Yeah, Tom we, we did that in phases. We weren't able to bid the entire project out up front like we did this way. <clears throat> Which is why we like to keep projects together on GMP as well. And, and I would risk. tell you that this is, you know, the major trade subs, um, kind of the envelope. So we still got, you know, the finishes and things like that. You're not going to get as much, but you, we are going to continue to have owner direct purchases. So there will probably will be another change order, maybe one or two after that for another deduct. And we would anticipate that probably, um, I would say, next month. So notice that the true savings is the three hundred fifty thousand no, yeah, dollars in sales true tax. Saving we're still is buying you, stuff. Yes, what you believe will be about two million dollars right. over the whole project is what you believe. Correct. Um, for the um, savings, we have a thirty percent ODP goal. goal. Yes, sir. We're gotcha. So that's ten million at seven percent or six percent. Yes. Yep. Six million. And then on the last, just quick. Uh, construction schedule update um, as you know we had the groundbreaking ceremony um, I think that went very well um, the erosion control started um, along AJ Gallagher we had put that up prior to the groundbreaking ceremony we've also started clearing if you've been out there obviously it's too dry right now to do any um, uh, mitigation on site so we are clearing and, and stacking but we are not doing any burning yet um, we are looking at getting our construction trailer um, uh, this Thursday and hooking that up and we'll be mobile very soon in the next two weeks. Excellent. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's great good. Your schedule's good with that? Your timing? Yes, sir. We're we, running a little behind? Uh, yes, sir. So we actually did an update on the schedule um, with the late start. Um, we started a little a week late on the actual gopher tortoise because of the weather impact, but I think we're very comfortable that's not going to be an issue. Our current schedule is still finishing June 27th for opening, and we're going to push that, you know, with the rainy season and um, our structure and get that up as quickly as possible. And, and Moss and Associates is looking at other opportunities yes, as sir. well to get that project momentum going very quickly, which typically is around the time of the dry end of the building where we can break Maximus. all our interior trades loose. So we're going to be working very diligently, looking yes. at that very closely to see where we can pick up some schedule along the way to get to that momentum quicker than later. Right. Okay. Great. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, and the Den John. Was, was very well done, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, Den John Middle School project update. Uh, we have. George Thomas with CT Shoe and Richard Rodriguez with Pearl Construction. Uh, turn it over to you, Mr. Thomas. Okay. Uh, the goals for this project is to uh, make, uh, achieve a uh, 1408 uh, student station and be an occupied campus. Uh, so uh, we're working to make sure that we can stay away from the activities of the school as we uh, build the, rebuild the entire campus. Uh, on the site plan, one of the key issues here we're working with as of late is trying to finalize the storm pond design. 
uh, key issues are uh, this is kind of like elementary and middle school are tied together for the whole storm system and we're trying to balance between not having too much pond up front versus what goes in the back of the campus. Uh, unfortunately, the back of the campus has a higher water table, so for bang for buck, you actually get a little bit more capacity up front, <coughs> but you know, we're working through that issues with Osceola engineering. But the concern is with the pond up front are aesthetic issues with having a wet retention at our front door, chain link fence, a wet feature, uh, sometimes will build up nuisance species, so we're trying to avoid that and place the pond to the rear of the site. Put a dragon in the pond, <laughs> like water <laughs> shooting out of its like dragon fountain. Right. Big right. CT so shoe, very happy with dragon sculpture. Sculpture. <laughs> what, are, what are breathing? CT of fire would like that, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> and uh, the school that we're referring to, the north, is Mill Creek Mill Elementary Creek. School, where we share that acreage. We'll have uh, six uh, buildings on this site. The building one will be the main building that houses almost all the classrooms, labs, and everything. Uh, building two will have the ESC components very close to the car loop. Uh, building three will have the admin. Four is going to have uh, the music facility. Five will have the gymnasium, locker room. And then six is more of a central plant, which we've located very central and part of the campus to keep it away from the neighbors and then the ways it might occur from that. Uh, and you can see uh, the floor plan of the main building here. Uh, this is going to house the central custodial, the kitchen, cafeteria, media center. And in it, there's uh, four wings that come off. Three wings house six, seven, and eight. And the uh, other wing on the grade level uh, will be the vocational wing and the art wing. On the second level, uh, we've worked with the principal to organize it. So he got six and seven on the second floor, and eight they'll be on the on the first floor. Uh, the other buildings are. Uh, and, and George, can you go back for just a minute? Yeah. So on the second floor, you'll notice uh, there are offices that align with those corridors for supervision. With our current safety security challenges, we saw that as as a benefit. They also have a view of the stairs, so if anybody comes up in that areas you can see that. Uh, the other buildings we're working within the existing envelope as much as possible to save money. We're looking at primarily doing these as a, uh, a refinish of each of these existing buildings. Uh, building four gets a band building addition which would be done as an ad alternate. Um, the locker room addition on the gymnasium would be bid as an ad alternate. So, and let me say this, according to our facility condition assessment, the, uh, that information led us to believe that we would be demolishing existing building one, replacing it with the new building 100. And by putting that building 100, if you want to go back to the site plan real quick, George, um, that would require our building 300 to serve as our new front door. So that will be, that's a classroom building that will be reconfigured into an admin suite. So that was the, the crux of the project. However, in working through and really digging into this project, we've noted that there are several uh, equity issues, facility equity issues. Uh, so the locker room being one of them. Though there were locker rooms that were added recently as part with the, uh, the City of Kissimmee grant, those are very small locker rooms. They do not accommodate all the student needs. Hence, you know, why we're including the new locker rooms as an ad alternate. That is something that was not contemplated as part of the original project. Same with the band building expansion being uh, carried as an ad alternate. There is currently an, uh, a band and a chorus. The band is, is shared, uh, shared use for orchestra as well. So the bump out would be to provide separate orchestra, band, and chorus. However, the school has confirmed that they could continue to share that space for orchestra and band. Uh, so why we're carrying various ad alternates, as well as the track and, and some other amenities. And currently, the, the school does not have a track. Uh, in, or, in order to get them the track, we would be encroaching quite a bit into Mill Creek's area. When those two plots of land were obtained, they are virtually the same size, about 22 acres. Usually you have a much bigger site for a middle school, 
much smaller site for an elementary school, but they've just kind of expanded to, <coughs> Mill Creek expanded to take their space, and they've got a lot of uh, PE amenities now in, in, in that area that we're trying to save and protect as much as we can. So if we were to encroach Mill Creek Elementary School, that would bring them down to somewhere around 15 acres, more of the traditional elementary school acreage. We're talking about this space in here. Yes. yes. A lot of that's just open green space. Yes. Yes, right? yes, 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 right. yes, it is. Correct. Yeah, with the in fact, there's a ditch. Which is what we call a PE amenity. There's Go a ditch kids. running through the middle of it that's <laughs> fenced, so it's not even usable. But right. We, we had that a high line when I was there. <laughs> and then there's also a, a, car, or a play area, a hardball court area right here, which might need to be relocated for, uh, uh, you know, area needed for retention. We're looking at this. We're vetting through those options now. Uh, before you go on, okay. please, uh, the locker room thing that you're talking about, that's in building 500 at the back end of the gymnasium? Yes. yes. And I understand we use the term equity, but um, that's used for PE? Correct, yes. And team sports. And then this gym, is this gym built bigger, smaller? No, standard? that's the same gym. That's same an gym. existing gym. The existing gym and the existing locker rooms are on the front and we have the joint use agreement the west side there with okay so the existing locker rooms are the small ones are in the front of the gym right now yes sir okay yes yeah you can see the size difference in that uh, being able to take the capacity of 1200 kids the, and there's no bathrooms or showers in those existing locker rooms okay and then the conversation the point you're making about the vocal orchestra and band mm -hmm. are you saying that that bump out where the band is may not be needed now yes sir but we will continue to carry it as an ad alternate to see what kind of pricing comes in for it and able to take another second look at it at a later date Do they have an orchestra class they have a band that they also can use as orchestra when it's not being used for band so through the years um, Orchestra has either shared space with the band or there is a room in the center of that building which suffices for an orchestra room. It's small, but it, it would work. So, Mike, your estimation is that we can make it work without that bump out? Yes, sir, that's correct. And then as far as the locker rooms, though, you feel different on that? I do. Um, I went over this morning and walked those uh, locker rooms just to go around. It's about a 20 by 20 space. It is extremely small. Yes. Without that, without showers. And the idea was that would be used for the joint use piece. Thank you. The new building is a two story tilt wall building, uh, very uh, typical of uh, school buildings. Uh, building one has a new Kind of front entry feature on it to help denote uh, where the parents would go uh, on the site and you'll see in some of the 3d uh, drawings what uh, what that would look like uh, the band building is shows how the uh, it's a very odd shaped building um, so it uh, the bump out kind of works with it uh, the gymnasium uh, has uh, kind of a bottom level of masonry and then a metal panel on up above, uh, we're adding on to the least intrusive part, the probably the better part to tie in structurally with, uh, from a wind and, and uh, deflection standpoint. Uh, the uh, central plant building, 600, is, is a tilt wall building, and here's some uh, renderings of uh, how the site works with the car loop and the buildings. Uh, what you see. Uh, from this angle is the edge of the track and the gymnasium in the kind of in the background you see the two story of the building one. So where that cart loop is uh, is where the existing building one is located today. What yes. is building 600? Uh, 600 central is a little plant. central plant. Okay. Yeah. Just for yeah. chillers. Yeah. Okay. Over by the basketball course. Uh, this is a view from the uh, bus loop looking at the school and you can see the entry piece uh, that denotes where the uh, the front door is. This is the, the ground level of, of the car drop-off area. 
uh, this is what from the parking lot the uh, the entry piece would look like. And then there's an aerial from the bus loop side that kind of looks back and you kind of see how the corridor or the, the courtyard works with the uh, uh, building uh, two, three, four, and one together there. And this slide also shows what the full build out of the retention pond could be, that green area in the upper part. Quick question. I had made a comment a while ago when we first started this conversation of trying to make sure that what happened with Den John complements what happened already across the street with Valencia and creating somewhat of an academic village feel when you go down that road. Um, I, I like the look, but I'm curious, do, do we feel like it actually complements the vernacular across the street or not, or if we just kind of abandon that or go in our own direction? Or no, no, they it, feel it like does, they and that they're both tilt-up construction. However, we're going to be looking at color palettes and to we see. We haven't selected the colors yet, so we'll, okay. we'll be making an attempt I, I to I think you make a great in. point. My kids are currently, and this is a little off, but I think <laughs> it's the right time to bring it up. My, my kids play middle school sports. For some reason, in this county, when they built these schools, they decided all of them should be maroon and gold. Uh, Parkway, Denjon, St. Cloud Middle. Bad choice of color. <laughs> can we take this opportunity to maybe... This template? Uh -huh. Well, can we take the opportunity to possibly just, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this discussion, maybe change the color, but, but also the color, the colors of Denjon. Middle school. Let's just, if we're going to have these, he wants, he wants blue and orange. Let's just cut <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care what they are, but we don't need four middle schools that are maroon and gold who are always playing each other now in team sports. Uh, but it's, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. I just want to put that on your radar. If that's but, something that the board would want us to consider, Mr. <coughs> Allen could certainly work with Mr. Hoyle to get some stakeholder input on how they no. feel about it. Yeah, okay, that's it. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time. Point, on I never thought about it, but I've been to those games. <laughs> yes, you're like, which team is this? Okay, so Mr. Allen will take that back as a to-do with Mr. Hoyle and the SAC okay. committee and since I didn't mean to interrupt the, the good conversation. Yeah, that's right. that's that's something that's that trivial, but that's that's not that's that's good input. What does um, what does the track and field cost us? What's the estimation on that? It depends on if you're looking for something that's competitive or not. It can range from you know from a half a million dollars upwards of three quarters. Well, it's, it's not going to be a rubberized track. If if we build a track, it'll be an asphalt track. It'll be somewhere around three hundred thousand yeah, dollars. It's not the cost; it's the real estate that it takes. A track eats up a tremendous amount of of area. In our case, real estate doesn't matter. We already own it. We're not going to use it for anything else, right? Am I correct? I mean, well, that's my a, thought. It's, it's just kind of balancing. It's on Mill Creek, right? That's the only yes. into their kind of PE and recess we, area. We actually have a meeting scheduled for Friday for afternoon Friday. with the assistant superintendents, elementary, and middle. Uh, those areas are now staked where we're going to review that in the field and and progress those discussions. The pond, the current configuration of the pond is staked. The current layout of the track, so we'll be able to visually eyeball see basically what's usable with with what remains and see if it's workable or not. Um, Mr. Yeah, Allen, we I think you would say that you would 100% advocate for this track, right? Not necessarily. No? No. Uh, and a track for a middle school to me is a nice to have. As you probably know some of our middle schools do have the amenity and some do not. Uh, yeah, St. Cloud has a clay track. Um, the, and then, but they, they have access to the high school. It's right basically yeah. across the street. Right, right. Um, so so right. Each, each school is different. But will they use this in PE? Yes. Okay. So, so it's principal, not like it's going to be used for a middle school track tournament three times a year. I was principal of uh, two middle schools. Horizon Middle School did not have a track, simply a grass. <coughs> uh, and then Narcusi Middle School indeed has an asphalt track. And I can tell you firsthand knowledge that track was used nearly every day by the teachers. And for after school events. And so, this field in the middle, this isn't really a field, it's just a it would, it would be, uh, it could be it's used a as soccer, a soccer field. It's, a soccer 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 it's just basically a big yes, bahia it's, grass it's field. Bahia. That's where you're very It's not irrigated. Non-irrigated bahia. There's always, there's always the CT Chu and Pro Athletics. But we can play flag like football, <laughs> <That's true>. soccer, <laughs> yes. all the PE stuff out there. And right now they have a tremendous field. That's where we're building the new 
the new uh, building one. And so, I think it's important for these schools that don't have access to a high school right across the street, essentially. Um, like the Harmonies of the World with Acker, you know, you know, Kissimmee, these things. St. Cloud Middle has that access. So some just to keep in mind, I'm a little indifferent on this track thing. I, why I'm asking the questions, I kind of go, I know there's a lot of these things that we want and we think it'd be really cool to have them, but I also go, you know, whether it's 100,000, 300, or half a million, that's money we can spend somewhere else. And if the money we have to spend at, at NEO is so important to the academic side, maybe a track over here is an area for us to save a little bit. Um, the other thing is to keep in mind, anytime we build one of these, it's the ongoing maintenance costs associated with well having to resurface it down the street. When I was a well, this is just the asphalt track, right? So yes, it is. It won't have, it won't six have lane the asphalt track. Um, it, it won't have the rubberized stuff that we always have to resurface. Man, I'm not saying I disagree with your assessment, I, I, but it's not like the high school tracks that oh, we're constantly having issues with. Yeah, but I remember even when I worked at Reading Creek, you still eventually have oh, yeah, to sure. resurface the yeah. asphalt tracks. Yeah. Seal coating, restriping. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, schedule? That's the student entrance. Uh, schedule, we're uh, currently in uh, working on the construction documents. So we submitted uh, the 60 percent, uh, we've gotten reviews, had a meeting with the building official, and we're working on his comments and working towards completing the documents. This next slide is really simple because we've got the assistance of Mr. Clinch and Mr. Hey, Mr. Margaret. Go back to the last slide. There's no um, schedule for um, when you're going to have substantial completion. That's on the construction That's be the construction. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> That's the only thing I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and, and we've been working closely with CT Shoe and providing uh, cost estimates that have led us down the path of we're in we're in DD um, budgeting now um, because of some of the things that Mr. Um, Clinch mentioned with respect to um, the renovation of the admin building and the extensive amount of additions and, and been creating this a la carte menu. So what we've done is that we've gone out almost as a full bid to the subcontractor community. And I think if I'm correct, I mean, we, we have um, upwards of, of, uh, of four electricians. Um, we've got the site contractors. So we've got every scope covered as if they were going to bid it for, for a ward so that we can get some real numbers to let you know when you make a decision at the next board meeting, this is what I can't afford, this is what I can't afford. We want to stay within a 2 to 3% range rather than, than have a larger swing with giving you information that just comes off of, you know, just a cost estimating budgets that we may provide. I um, mean, we hope that we'll have that by... Um, yeah, by we'll, we'll bring month. that level of cost information forward at our next facilities yeah. workshop. Yeah. Next project. Absolutely. Um, as far as uh, the next level, which is uh, the schedule, we know that we're expecting um, to have the, um, the construction documents complete um, early part of June, which puts us into a bidding process over the course of the summer in GMP um, development. Our target right now will be about the September 11th board, which would then shortly after that follow up with we're anticipating probably um, either end of September, or first week of October for us to have an NTP, at which time we've got some um, pretty uh, extensive site work that we know that we've got a, a, a tree um, uh, area that we need to uh, uh, we need to deal with and, um, and the diversion of that the ditch around the back. We're anticipating to start the actual construction of the building pad somewhere around the end of November, beginning of December. For a 120,000 square foot building, we look at that 11 month window. So it kind of puts us into a winter 2019 turnover for that, for the main building with the, with the entire campus. Although um, we're anticipating to maybe have the administration coming over the summer so that we don't have that um, that long. Um, that's a renovation piece, not. not yeah. Yeah. So we'd like admin to be in that space so they can start operating, <coughs> manage the school. Yeah. Moving a school is, is a lot easier than moving your, your, your what we call the heartbeat of the, of the building. Um, then that leaves us a couple of months at the at the end of uh, beginning of 2020, which would be to demolish and complete the parking lot. And then we've got some certain phasing plans that we'll share with the team of how we're going to navigate um, traffic with bus, you know, bus traffic and car traffic to make sure that we isolate that center construction and still make maintain full operation of the school. So we continue to work through those phasing plans in an effort to minimize disruptions to the ongoing operation as much as possible. 
So much like we've run into out at uh, Michigan Avenue, what's going on there with some of the stuff we talked about, Randy, a week or so ago. Uh, were you in the meeting? I don't remember who was in the meeting. Um, oh, it was um, Cassidy. Um, we should anticipate the same type of things from a traffic and crossing guard and all those type of standpoints. I'd imagine with Den John, the construction of the shifting that we're yes. dealing with in Michigan and planning ahead for that. Right. They're not running jackhammers during the school day out of Michigan Avenue, are they? <laughs> or, or backup yes, alarms or yeah, uh, more concrete trucks. compacting. <laughs> 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 I think, does anybody have any more questions? No, are you, are you guys finished? We are. Finished. I want to thank you all for coming here today, providing uh, this update for the board. We will, this, we will uh, adjourn this workshop. We will convene at 530 for our school board meeting. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thanks, guys.